Okay, so very welcome back to our tutorial on digital electronics. So as you can see, we have got a new topic today called as CMOS logic gates. So let us start. So as you can see, this is a schematic representation of a CMOS inverter. We call it as a CMOS inverter because it consists of two devices. This is your PMOS and this is your NMOS. So they are complementary transistors and therefore we call it as a CMOS. And we would now see how this circuit will act as an inverter. So before that, let us identify the pins of the transistors. This is a source pin of the PMOS. This is the gate pin of the PMOS. And this is the drain pin of the PMOS. For the NMOS, this is the drain pin. This is the gate pin. And this is the source pin right over here. Now you can see that the gate pins of both the transistors are tied together and to which we are going to apply the input labeled as A. The drain pin of both the transistors are tied together and there is a net here called as output Y. The source pin of the PMOS is tied to the highest positive supply in the circuit that is VDD. The source pin of the NMOS is tied to the lowest potential in the circuit that is called as ground. And now we will see how this circuit will work like here. So truth table says, truth table of this particular uh, CMOS inverter circuit says, you have got input A and you have got output Y. And if you apply input zero to the input pin, then output will show one. That is the complementary logic. This is a binary logic we are using. So let us see how the applying zero logic at the input A will result in logic one at the output Y. So when you have a zero right over here, the zero applied to PMOS turns it on and zero applied to the NMOS turns it off. So this transistor NMOS acts as an open circuit. This transistor PMOS acts as a short circuit. And when there is a short circuit, there is a current flow from source to the drain pin till the output. And this is obviously an open circuit here. So in other words, we can say that output Y is pulled to the highest potential of the circuit through this. So PMOS here acts as a pull up network. So this is how we see that output Y results in logic one because VDD is actually logic one and the ground is actually logic zero. Now in another case, let us say you apply one at the input and the result is output is zero. So if you have one logic one at the input, it means one at the gate of the NMOS turns it on. However, one at the gate of the PMOS turns it off. It means this transistor NMOS acts as a closed switch making the possibility of the current flow through it. And we, in other words, we say the output is pulled down to the lowest potential in the circuit, that is the ground. That's why the ground is at the logic zero and we see output Y is logic zero. So this NMOS is acting here as a pull down network. In earlier, PMOS acted as a pull-up network, in this case, NMOS is acting as a pull-down network. So the job of both these networks are to either pull up the Y to the highest potential or pull down the Y to the lowest potential. This is how the NMOS and PMOS forms a CMOS inverter. How about we go to a universal logic gate? For example, here you see 
a schematic representation of a NAND logic, not AND. This is a NAND logic. So how do you see this? The NMOS number one and number two are connected in series to each other and PMOS number one, number three and number four are connected in parallel to each other. So you can see that these are the gate pins of the NMOS to which two inputs are applied. So this is basically a two input NAND gate, two input NAND logic. So you have input A, input B. Similarly, because it's a complementary logic, you have input A and input B to the PMOS transistors as well. Now, the source pins of the both the PMOS are tied to the highest potential in the circuit that is VDD, which is logic one in terms of binary logic. And the source pin of the bottom most transistor is connected to the logic zero, that is the lowest potential in the circuit. Now you can see that drain pin of this transistor and source pin of this transistor are tied together. And here the drain pins of both the PMOS are connected together and they are also connected to the drain pin of NMOS. And finally at this node, you are taking the output why? Now, let us understand in the form of truth table how this circuit will work as a two input NAND logic using the complementary transistors. So we'll see again. So you can now clearly see you have got two inputs A and B. Therefore, two to the power N that is, that will be your input combination. So n equal to two here, and because we are using base two, so two to the power two will be four input possible combinations. So they are zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So now we'll see for these four input combination, how the output to y shows the result. So let's say you apply zero, zero to the input transistor. So here it is zero, here it is zero, here it is zero, and here it is zero. So zero applied to the NMOS gates turns them off, turns them off. It means they both act as open switches and there is no path for output to come down to the ground or the lowest potential in the circuit. However, 0, 0 on the PMOS makes them turn on and therefore they are in parallel. Output is pulled up to the highest potential in the circuit. That's why logic 1 can be the output in this case. How about apply 0 and 1 as A and B? So here is your 0 and here is your 1. So this transistor is off and this transistor is on. Since this is off, there is no way output can connect to the lowest potential that is ground in the circuit. However, when A is zero and B is one for PMOS, A turns on, B turns off. How? Because of this, even this is open switch, this is on and that allows the output to connect to the highest potential into the circuit. That's why the output in this situation is also one. Now one and zero. One is here, zero is here, makes transistor on and this transistor off. So even this transistor is on, output can come up to this part, but since this transistor is off, output cannot connect to the lowest potential into the circuit. However, if you have one and zero making transistor this side on and this side off, so still you have a connection of output to the out highest potential into the circuit. So output is pulled up again to the logic high. That's why you have logic one right over here. 
So you can see that how for different combinations of inputs, output is either being pulled up to the highest potential in the circuit or output is being pulled down to the lowest potential into the circuit. Finally, we have the final case where we are applying logic one to both the transistor. So making one one here, both are turned on, acting them as a closed switch, allowing the current pass through the transistor and output therefore gets connected to the lowest potential in the circuit. So these transistors are acting as pull down network together. So you can see that the pull down network is on in this case. However, one and one here turns them both off. And therefore, there is no current flow through these transistors making them open switch. There is no way output can reach or pulled up to the highest potential in the circuit. That's why we see the pull up network here is off. You can similarly identify the role of pull up and pull down for the above three combinations based on the inputs and outputs we have explained to you earlier. So clearly for these combination of inputs, you have this is the possible output. And it says that your output of this network is logic zero only when both inputs are one. That is clearly a truth table or the logic table for NAND gate. So hope you found this module useful. If you did so, consider sharing with others, put some likes and stay tuned for more engaging content like this. Till then, wish you very happy learning.